Esto es aprovechar que ve que he programado el viaje para presentar el informe Revoluciones Energéticas en el escenario para la Argentina. Él viene de Chile, presentó un escenario parecido en Chile. La idea es que, bueno, él haga una presentación de básicamente en qué consiste el escenario, explicando, bueno, la, la, la fundamentación, las razones por las cuales hicimos esto, las bases metodológicas de, del escenario eh, y cualquier cosa por algunas cuestiones estrictamente más nacionales, yo me quedo para que pueda, podamos responder entre los dos. Así que, eh, adelante. We, um assume that we have to stabilize um, CO2 concentration in the atmosphere below 400 parts, uh, ppm, parts per million, and that the global peak of CO2 uh, concentration um, should be not later than 2015 on a global level. That means we, until 2050, we have to reduce um, global CO2 emissions um, from currently about 29 gigatons to about 10. And that would uh, again mean um, per person in 2015, 50, roughly one ton CO2 uh, per year. We also define some uh, energy related um, objectives. One is to uh, phase out fossil fuels. Um, second is we only use technology which is on available on the market right now. Um, we face out nuclear on a global level and um, we have uh, equity and fairness which means um, all the developing countries have of course the right to develop. To summarize, first we try to bring down the energy demand. Then uh, we have an uptake of renewables and those two parameters define how fast we can phase out fossil fuels. The speed how fast um, a, um, a renewable energy supply could be increased depends on the country situation. If there is the already uh, a renewable industry existing in the, in the country and how big is the industry, uh, that's very different from country to country, so the first phase is uh, very different. Uh, Argentina right now has a um, renewable energy share of about 5%, um, and with our concept we are able to increase that to over 20% in 2020. Uh, just over 30% in 2030 and over 60% by 2050. Um, ours uh, is a mix of seven different technologies. So um, we call that security of supply because the majority of those, uh, of those sources don't even need fuel or don't need imported fuel. So um, this is this resource from the country itself, uh, which means there is no dependence on world market fossil fuel prices. Coming now to the transport sector, so that the most important thing in the transport sector first is efficiency. We need to have more efficient transport system, no matter if it's uh, the, the rail system, the bus system or specific cars, they all need to be as efficient as possible. And after we have this efficiency, we can implement some renewables, but there are not many options uh, for the transport sector. Uh, for renewables. Coming to the heating sector, we are able to increase the renewable energy share in the heating and cooling sector from virtually nothing, which is right now about 2%, um, to um, over 77%. Uh, the majority um, in, this, in this mix is, comes from solar collectors for water heating um, and uh, biomass cogeneration and a little bit of geothermal. Coming to the electricity sector, um, it's basically the same, same picture. We rely on seven different technologies um, to generate electricity in the future, while um, the reference scenario has basically one, let's say one and a half main sources uh, for uh, electricity generation. Again, that puts um, Argentina uh, in a very unstable position. Um, we understand that um, Argentina sold a lot of gas already to Chile, um, so there's not enough left for, for, uh, for the next 40 years to power Argentina. So this gas then has to come from outside. From now till 2020, we can uh, increase the renewable energy share from today roughly 35% to 57%. Um, and this is mainly to new renewable sources. Um, like uh, the main or the most important new renewable energy source will be wind, uh, followed by biomass. 
Wind um, power is the fastest growing energy source worldwide right now. And uh, if um, the in last year in the US, as well as uh, in the European community, there have been more new wind turbine installed than uh, new gas power plants. So it is the fastest growing source and it's also one of the most economic um, power generation source from all, from all technologies, not just renewables. The um, CO2 emissions for Argentina will rise until 2015. Um, then will come down um, due to the implementation of renewables and efficiency. Um, to, uh, in 2020, we are just below today's um, level. Um, and in the long run, in 2050, Argentina could, could reduce um, CO2 emissions by minus 36% based on 1990 levels. So between 1990 and now, the CO2 emissions went up roughly 50%. And then we, uh, with, this, with our concept, this will continue on in the next five years. And then uh, the CO2 emissions go uh, slightly down again. So the main, the main two groups, main two sectors for CO2 emissions in the future for Argentina will be um, the transport sector followed by the industry. Um, and um, all the other sectors are able to reduce significantly the CO2. So that's the ma two main sectors uh, remaining with CO2 emissions. Last but not least, we would like to um, um, suggest a mechanism how um, Argentina could actually implement uh, renewables um, into the sector. And this is a mix um, of, uh, of with different stakeholders. We asked Argentina to um, come up with a renewable energy law, a feed-in law for the guaranteed price per kilowatt hour, which is in place in about 40 countries around the world including guaranteed grid access for renewables and a standard licensing proce process. This is the mix of the German and the Spanish and the Danish model. So Spain or Germany or Denmark, they already have that uh, in place. But what the difference is, we um, suggest that the additional cost for the first years will come from outside, uh, from a fund which is currently discussed under the uh, climate negotiations which take place end of this year in Copenhagen. So this, this, uh, proj this um, program would cost about $700 uh, million a year for the next 20 years. Um, and we asked the international community, industrialized countries, to give this additional money to Argentina, which would add up to 14 billion US dollars uh, for the whole program. And that would enable um, in Argentina to kickstart the, uh, the renewable energy sector within the country. Uh, with a local industry. So Greenpeace is internationally calling the industrialized countries to put up a fund uh, in a volume of about $100 billion per year for uh, renewable energy and energy efficiency projects. Um, so that uh, Argentina would get a fraction from that, um, but depending on, of course, the amount of energy. But this $100 billion uh, program uh, would be sufficient that Argentina, but also other countries, could get enough money to start such a project. The role that has to the government argentino, we have partially completed. That is, there is today in Argentina an access to the grid, we have guaranteed for the producers of energy renewables. This was achieved in the mid-90s with the first law of solar, complemented with a law of mediados of 2006. Y tenemos eh, también todo el proceso de licenciamiento y de, de, de permisos para obtener ese, ese acceso a la red también bien explicitado. Algo en este sentido ha pensado eh, recientemente el gobierno, todavía con un gran signo de, de, de interrogación acerca de cuál va a ser el resultado, cuando planteó el, el esquema este de, eh, creo que se llama Henry, ¿no? el, el, el esquema de un desarrollo de mil megavatios de renovables donde se plantea allí también un esquema de tarifa, de tarifa fija. Por eso digo, las condiciones locales en este esquema que estamos planteando tienen un cumplimiento parcial. Habría que lograr que haya una decisión por parte del gobierno de establecer por lo menos para un tramo de desarrollo de, de renovables con tarifa fija. Que es el esquema, como explicaba desde de los más usuales y más exitosos a nivel mundial.